No. Oh, now we're live. There we go. Okay. Yes, you're good to go, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Well, welcome everyone back uh, to the May 4th Council meeting. We had a little technical glitch, so uh, now we are recording and live streaming. Before, we were just recording, so at least we have that information, which will be available on the website at www.perrysound.ca. And uh, so we were going into the open or sorry the um, public meeting so we will continue on with the public meeting and i was just about to ask miss johnson if she could explain how the public was notified of zoning bylaw amendment z21049 and 11 church street fat architects on behalf of Pearl. As your worship, notice was given by prepaid first class mail to the required prescribed agencies and property owners within 120 meters, posted on the property, posted in the newspaper, and was placed on the town's website. Thank you. Mr. Algy, can you explain the purpose of the proposed zoning bylaw amendment? The applicant has requested to change the zoning of the property from C1 on 11 Church Street and amend the SP26119 holding on 9 Church Street to permit a mixed use building with commercial ground floor and 20 residential spaces. Exemptions to the height of 16.8 meters is requested, the rear yard setback reduced to three meters and parking requirements 24 spaces that are 2.79 by six meters, a driveway width of three and a half meters, and uh, exemption to the ground floor commercial slash residential ratio are requested, as well as a uh, loading space reduction. The address is 911 Church Street. Surrounding land uses are commercial and residential. Okay, thank you. As this is an electronic public meeting under Planning Act uh, due to COVID-19, we call upon those in the electronic attendance if they wish to comment. Please make sure that you have your screen on and that you signal the camera or raise your hand if, if you wish to speak. Our moderator will call out uh, individuals when it's their turn to speak. Please keep your microphone muted until it's your turn. So at this time, does anyone wish to speak in favor of this proposed zoning bylaw amendment? If so, please identify yourself by name and address. So, Mr. Ryan, welcome. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm acting on behalf of the uh, developer on the property, and I'm here to speak on behalf of them and in support of the project. Um, <clears throat> I think the project focuses development within the urban area and strengthens the central business district as a prime location and place to live. And I think it's very much in keeping with the town's official plan. One of the tools at our disposal to help fight uh, the effects of climate change is to reduce our dependence on the car. And to do that, we need to stop spreading our development outward by increasing our density um, so that we can create more walkable, livable cities or communities. And projects like this, I think, are key to that concept. Okay, that's everything? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak in favor of the proposed zoning bylaw amendment? No. Okay. Um, is there anyone that wishes to speak in opposition to the proposed zoning bylaw amendment? If so, please identify, identify yourself by name and your address. No? I know we have one other person on here, Mr. Gray. Okay, I just thought I'd give a minute just in case. I'm not hearing anything else. So um, Mr. LG, have there been any letters received as a result of this notice? Through your worship, there have been no formal comments yet. There have been a couple requests for information and, and some back and forth on and questions, but nothing that would be shared at this point. Uh, but if those do result in comments, that will come forward in the public reports. 
Okay, thank you. The public should contact staff or check the town's website to see when this amendment will come back for a decision. Council at its discretion may approve the proposed zoning bylaw amendment. If so, it must either circulate notice of passing of the bylaw or give notice in the local press. Objections to the passing of the bylaw will be received by the clerk within 20 days from the date of such notice is given, which objections will be forwarded to the local planning appeal tribunal. If an appeal is submitted and the appellant has not provided counsel with an oral or written submission before the passing of the bylaw, the local planning appeal tribunal may choose to dismiss the appeal. Thank you everyone. And may I have a mover and seconder to declare the public meeting closed. Councillor Borneman, Councillor Keith, uh, that we do now adjourn, uh, we do now declare the public meeting closed. Anyone opposed to that? Nope, that's carried then. So we're back in a regular meeting. Okay. May I have a um, mover and seconder for the previous meeting's minutes? Councillor Burden and Councillor McCann that uh, the minutes of the regular council meeting held April 20th, 2021 be approved as circulated. Any discussion on those minutes? Seeing none, anyone opposed to the passing of those minutes? Oh, that's carried then. Questions of staff. I have one. <laughs> it's for Mr. Kearns. So I've had some inquiries with regards to the trees that were cut down in the Gibson Street area uh, near Market Square Park. Um, I know there was uh, an email sent to council explaining why, but I think considering the number of trees and the size of the trees that the public should have some kind of an answer as to why uh, that happened. Um, certainly your worship. So um, given the nature of the number of trees, as you mentioned, the size of the trees, um, we took it upon um, the department to consult with a uh, board certified arborist. Uh, while staff have a great deal of experience with trees, um, and we did certainly take a look at them ahead of time. We had some questions as to whether they could actually be salvaged, uh, maintained, I hate to, salvaged is not a great word for it, but maintained, uh, perhaps through pruning to, to be able to um, extend the life of the trees. The board certified arborist did visit, inspected each of the trees um, from a number of different perspectives. He talks about live crown ratios, um, essentially assessing the, the amount of viable growth within the crown <clears throat> the initial um, uh, issue with the trees was we were losing limbs. So we did have some complaints about dropping limbs uh, on private property near vehicles and adjacent to the sidewalk. So that certainly um, got our attention to start with. So the arborist did assess the trees uh, and the recommendation that came back was that they were not candidates for maintenance and that removal was the only viable option to remove the hazards uh, that the trees and the condition of the trees presented to both public and private property. Um, as, as an aside, he did point out, and I wasn't aware of this uh, personally, but they are Norway maples, which uh, this was not part of the, um, the decision-making process, but they are considered an invasive species by the Invasive Plant Council and the Ontario government. Now, having said that, they are not... Uh, necessarily of, of the same threat of some other, other invasive species, but certainly when we are looking at replacements throughout town, we, we will be aware of uh, that type of information going forward. Okay, thank you. Uh, Council Borneman. I have a couple questions this evening, uh, Your Worship. The first one for Mr. LG. I note on the town's website that uh, um, the proposed zoning bylaw is posted. Uh, Mr. LG, can you tell us, and I realize that I expect that with public notice and public meetings and whatnot, that this is going to be a lengthy 
process? Uh, through your worship. Yeah, it's been a lengthy process. We had it pretty darn close to a, a public open house last February, last March. And we were actually thinking of doing it in the spring last year. And then and COVID happened and we absolutely pumped the brakes on it. Uh, the intent of an open house usually is everyone walks in, you have big plans printed, copies of the bylaw, and you interact with people and go over it. And it's you try to make it as accessible to anyone in the community as you can. Uh, doing it online is one way of doing it, but, and I've been talking to consultant, it's, it's difficult to do that in a sense where you would look over a large zoning map or go over provisions with a, a member of public in a Zoom call because it's, well, it's like this, it's a very one-on-one -on -one interaction, uh, not so much as uh, everyone in a room working together. So that's part of the reason for the delay that being said, though, we've been watching other municipalities trying to do it electronically. And we are, who knows when the COVID landscape is going to change. So we are probably going to be working towards trying to do it in a manner within the next four to six months, hopefully to move it forward. If issues arise, we might have to back burn it. But if it's successful, that's great. Uh, also, people can get in contact with me by a phone or by email or writing a letter. So if the open house doesn't work, there are other ways to try to, to find out what's going on. And I can mail a copy to anyone who needs it. So Mr. LG, I, I, in reading through that, I noticed that there are, you know, uh, a number of substantial changes, I, I guess, going forward. One of them being uh, potentially uh, backyard hens and such and I, I understand that currently we're seeing some neighbor to neighbor angst over this issue and then speaking with you and, and bylaw staff I understand that some sort of uh, separate bylaw to control uh, to have proper controls in place would be ne necessary uh, so I'm wondering if if it's possible, I think that puts our bylaw staff in a really bad position, having one set of bylaws on the books and us kind of in abeyance and enforcement. Uh, so I'm wondering if it's possible to bring forward some control mechanism in the interim to allow for that. Uh that, that could be a possibility. Um, if Bylaw or uh, Allison and Dave are both on the line, so if they would like to jump in and comment more on the on a site specific regulations bylaw or the the enforcement issue, I would I would encourage them to do so. Uh, the rationale it was proposed to go in the comprehensive update is there are a lot of larger issues that are taking place in that. Uh, for instance, we're we're looking at better regulating uh, shipping containers. Uh, Right now, the current bylaw doesn't really mention them specifically, and they're treated just as any shed would be, and we're, we're looking to get a handle on that. Uh, originally, accessory units were going to be addressed in the, in the comprehensive bylaw, but then when COVID happened, and it's such a pressing matter from the province, we decided to actually uh, to isolate that one. So the idea was to look at it holistically, try to give a big picture of the vision of where we see the town going through the zoning bylaw and that that was the rationale. So I'm not sure if that's a yes or a no. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, yes, you could, you could direct though, if uh, a site, not a site specific bylaw because it doesn't pertain to a property, but uh, a specific bylaw if, if a motion was, was made. I just want to explain the rationale for the course of action. And and it, Taylor, how long would it take to bring something like that forward? Because if it's three months, there isn't much sense. If it's three weeks, then it probably makes some sense to take it uh, to 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 do that. Um, it definitely be more than than three weeks. Uh, I can see anywhere from three to to five months, depending on the level of public involvement. I should have noted. The, Getting to the open house within four to six months was the goal. That doesn't mean the comprehensive bylaws approved because you have to do an open house, then you have to wait some time, then you have to do a mandatory public meeting after that. 
and then you usually have some errors to clean up and then the comprehensive bylaw after that may come forward for approval at a subsequent meeting so i i glazed over that sorry so on that basis i guess i'd be making that request that we we do something to have those regulations in place sooner rather than later um and i, I guess that has to take the form of a direction or a resolution at some point mr mayor mm -hmm. I, and I, I have one further question. I don't want to monopolize time, but I have one further question for Mr. Harris. A year ago, council agreed to fund uh, some impact awards for uh, uh, local innovation and small business. It, uh, like many other things, it got put on the back burner with COVID. I understand that this is finally uh, coming place online uh, later this month, Mr. Harris. Can you uh, advise the public what's taking place in that regard? Uh, uh, certainly, Councilor Borman, through, through the mayor. Yeah, Perry Sound uh, was one of uh, 32 founders in the Perry Sound area. Uh, the Impact Awards uh, will be presented at a virtual gala this uh, May 27th from 5 to 7.30 p.m. Uh, the Muskoka Founder Circle and the Perry Sound Area Founder Circle will each be presenting awards during the evening. The awards are designed to identify uh, entrepreneurs with promising new ideas. This is the third year for the Muskoka Founder Circle, but uh, as Councillor Borneman mentioned, this is the first year for the Perry Sound Area Founder Circle. So it's uh, <clears throat> we're quite excited about participating. Um, individuals and businesses in the Perry Sound Area have each contributed a thousand dollars towards the awards. Uh, five finalists have gone through a Dragon's Den style uh, selection process. Out of that, the Perry Sound Founder Circle will be awarding uh, two awards. The first place award is ten thousand dollars. Second place is five thousand dollars. The uh, registration for the event, the virtual gala, is free. Uh, anybody interested can go to the Perry Sound Muskoka Community Network, PMCM, and there's a registration uh, form on their website. Uh, there is an option to contribute $1,000, sorry, $20, uh, if you want to up your registration and receive uh, a package that includes uh, gifts and, and uh, items from local, uh, local businesses. But if, if that's not of interest, uh, the registration for the event is, is free. Um, happy to answer any questions. Okay. Oh, Councillor Bachman. Um, I just have a question not pertaining to the awards though, Your Worship. Oh, okay. Well then we'll move on then. Uh, I do wanna go back though, before we go to that question, Councillor Borneman wanted to know about um, a bylaw, whatever, with regard to backyard hens. Um, I think there needs to be some direction with regard to that. So if he's moving that, um, can we have a seconder for the direction as well? Councillor Keith? Okay. Um, Allison, did, uh, Ms. Kruger, did you wanna say anything or are you okay? Um, through your worship, I was just going to add, um, in addition to what Taylor was saying, that as far as the control for backyard hens, we would want to look at a standalone bylaw um, that deals with the specifics to the control. And that would be the plan once the, the draft zoning bylaw went forward, if backyard chickens was included in um, the approved version. However, that piece where it is approved within our zoning bylaw does need to happen prior to be able, being able to pass a bylaw that controls the actual um, you know, keeping of the chickens. The permissions need to be in place for allowing them within our zoning bylaw. So that would be a two piece um, thing that we would need to look at in regards to bringing forward the keeping of hens in town. Wow. So one can't go without the other. No, the zoning bylaw needs to permit it um, and lay out which properties would be able to have them. And then the standalone bylaw would be giving the regulations by which they would be kept. Um, I believe that's 
probably something that Taylor can still address, you know, in advance of the comprehensive zoning bylaw as a specific amendment. Um, but we would have to work in conjunction with the two separate pieces. Okay. So our direction then needs to be a little more complex than just doing a bylaw, right? Uh, yes, Your Worship, it would need uh, to have an amendment to the current zoning bylaw. Um, and Taylor may be able to speak to that a little bit more, but I believe he can bring forward a specific subject such as was done with the secondary units. Once it was permitted, um, then on, well, once the, the zoning bylaw was amended to show where it would be permitted, then we could put in place um, the regulations for the actual keeping of the hens. Okay, so maybe the direction is then that we uh, investigate and work through the process of how this can proceed. Ms. Johnson, does that satisfy what might be in a direction for, I know it's kind of vague, um, Worship, I was understanding that the, if, if I understood correctly, that there, uh, an amendment to the current zoning bylaw would be a next step. Uh, maybe yeah. ask um, Ms. Kruger, yeah. was that, That's did what I understand that correctly? So, yeah. so should, could the direction be that um, staff be, um, uh, direction to staff to review the current zoning bylaw to consider look, uh, consider um, zoning for permitting backyard, backyard hens. hens. Yeah, okay, maybe that's better. And I would just refer to Mr. Elgy if that yeah. uh, is doable. Yes, uh, that, is, that is doable. Okay, all right. Would you be looking for a staff recommendation or you're recommending it come forward recommending uh, I, I, I think from what I hear, we're recommending that it come forward because we've got the issue now. So let's deal with it. Okay. Um, okay, so we have the direction, Councilor McCann. Uh, so does this include uh, some sort of a structure uh, for keeping the chickens? Does this all fall under yes. one, one roof then? Okay. Yes, it has to. Okay. Anyone opposed to passing the direction? Nope. Okay. That's carried. Um, Councillor Backman, you had a question. Thank you, Your Worship. I guess my question is um, for our clerk. Um, I just wanted to know if we've received a response from our request um, for the Near North um, Board to um, present to Council an update. Uh, through you, Your Worship, yes, we did receive a response from our um, school board uh, representative, um, John Cochran, and he checked with uh, his uh, the board chair, he's the vice chair actually, and the director of education, and they are scheduled to come and make a presentation on the um, re reconstruction of the high school at uh, uh, it is one of the meetings in June. I know I've sent out that information and I'm just not recalling immediately whether it was June 1st or June 15th, but certainly they are coming to one of the two meetings in June. Okay, and just as a follow-up, um, and I guess this would go, um, on, uh, maybe be directed to uh, Mr. Harris. In regards to the construction of the school, has there been any um, conversation of traffic studies being required? You're muted, Mr. Harris. Through to Councillor Backman, through the mayor. Um, that's, I'm gonna defer that question to perhaps Mr. Elgy, he may, uh, be more familiar with the planning side of it? Uh, through your worship, um, myself, Dave Thompson, and Mike Kierens uh, met with the school board representatives, of, representatives the other week and did recommend a traffic study that not only looks at cars, but also pedestrian traffic in the area. 
it's my understanding that they were receptive to that idea, but we haven't seen anything yet because I do not believe it is prepared yet. Okay, and I guess just one thing to note on that, I have been following the um, mega school project up in North Bay and as a result of their traffic study, um, construction was required. Obviously North Bay is one municipality or one um, entity. So I guess one of the concerns moving forward and to be proactive good would be um, who would be, if any changes of our infrastructure and our roads were to be um, required, I guess, uh, you know, it'd be discussion as to who would be paying these costs. So just wanted to make that note. Thank you. Okay. Um, I would hope that it would be like Perry Sound Public School and the school board paid for it. So, uh, Councillor Keith. Yes, thank you. I have a couple of questions for Mr. Cairns, please. Um, Mr. Cairns, one of my questions, I have two, but one has to do with the number of potholes still in the municipality. Um, I'm thinking over on Water Street, it looks like there was a cut right there in the center of the pavement or near the center, which is a nice little drop if your tire gets in it. I'm wondering, um, is there a plan? How do you go through to determine um, a number of potholes that you're going to repair and uh, what is the percentage of repairs for this year so far? Um, certainly through your worship. Um, I don't have exact percentages and totals um, uh, in front of me. That's certainly something we can take a look at. Um, staff have been out as weather permits um, patching potholes. So we use a a recycled asphalt in terms of a hot mix when we repatch our potholes. So we reutilize the asphalt that's been removed from uh, from the roadways for various reasons, whether it's reconstruction or road cuts and those sorts of things. Now the road cuts that have occurred since last season in terms of water, wastewater repairs, those <laughs> kinds of things will be scheduled for repair. Um, we're a little bit early still in terms of the hot mix season. So most of those will be compiled uh, and patched by an external contractor as they come in and move through to repair those larger sections. But um, if there are areas of concern, uh, certainly please let me know and we'll take a closer look at what we can do to get those mitigated in the interim. Yes, Councillor Keith. Yes, one more question, Mr. Cairns. Thank you, um, Your Worship. And that has to do with uh, the railing, the plans for the railing there and part of the Cascade Hill. How is that coming along, sir? So yes, through Your Worship. Actually, I've been speaking with uh, a local contractor who um, has agreed to meet me on site and we've just trying to arrange that time to meet on site. What we wanna do is take a look at that railing to make sure that we can reinstall it in, in a fashion that doesn't hinder winter maintenance in particular, uh, so that it's not damaged by snow removal equipment in the winter on that hill. So we are progressing um, and we will have a solution uh, shortly. Uh, actually our, our schedules haven't quite matched up yet to be able to meet on site, but I am following up with that. My follow-up to that question, just the way you worded it, are they, will there be a new railing or have you found the old railing that was put in the mothballs and you're trying to reinvent it, please? My last question. Certainly through your worship. Um, it, well, it's a bit of a combination of those two. Um, I was under the impression initially that uh, we were not in possession of the railing. I have a suspicion that we may be in possession of the former railing. So we kind of, we have to do an assessment of its current condition and see whether it's viable or not. Um, it was removed prior to the construction on uh, Cascade and I don't believe it was removed in a, uh, a gentle manner perhaps. So it may not be viable to reuse it. So that's something we're going to be uh, considering too in its replacement, whether you know we can, uh, whether it makes economic and um, practical sense to reuse all or part of it or to start with something new. Okay. All right, any further questions of staff? 
Nope. Okay. Uh, correspondence, Ms. Johnson. Yes, Your Worship. Uh, we don't have too many items of co correspondence this evening. The first is from Anne Bossart of Tower Hill Gardens, a gardener's coordinator. Um, she wrote a letter expressing great appreciation for the work of the Recreation Department staff under the management of April McNamara for the work at Tower Hill, um, getting things ready for this year. The second letter is actually a series of individual letters of the same text supporting council's position to deny construction of a vehicle bridge over the fitness trail. Over the last two meetings previous, at least there have been similar letters of the same text. These letters are from Margaret Dunnigan, June Carlton, Louise Campbell, Cynthia Hamlin, and Anita Chichok. The third letter is from Marianne Weaver, clerk of the Township of the Archipelago, uh, with a resolution of support for the West Perry Sound Area Recreation and Culture Center. The last item is in addition to the agenda. It was received yesterday and circulated to members of council, and I've added it to the agenda because it is in reference to an item that's being considered this evening. The letters from Anne and Dave Herdman, Perry Sound residents, um, their ex expression of concern with the proposed bylaw amendment to the parking and traffic bylaw, and it is item 10-4-2 uh, on the agenda. And the proposed bylaw amendment would charge for the overnight parking at the boat launch. Um, their recommendation is that at least uh, for residents, parking permits be issued at no charge. And that's the correspondence. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, we don't have any deputations, so we'll go to reports. And as I've been doing, I'll go across the screen. Um, so I'll start with uh, Councillor Burden. Uh, I haven't had any meeting since our last council meeting and I have absolutely nothing to report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Burden. Uh, Councillor McCann. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council staff and uh, public. Uh, a brief report here on two meetings, the uh, Belvedere Heights Board of Management monthly meeting with Councillor Borneman. Uh, we attended that uh, electronically Wednesday morning, April 28th. Um, and um, we had uh, reports from our finance committee, uh, life lease and community support services uh, reports and a review of our annual financial statement for the year ending December 21st, uh, December 31st, 2020 is prepared by KMPG. And uh, there's some more I'll uh, defer to uh, Councillor Borneman with regards to some of the uh, the news moving forward. Um, the West Perry Sound District Museum monthly meeting held Thursday evening, April 22nd. Uh, we adopted a very simple uh, code of conduct moving forward. Um, it, uh, there was also a review on internet access for the museum as well as for our manager at home as we continue with conducting Zoom meetings. Um, and uh, we, we also, uh, and I'll be approaching Mr. Kearns at some point in the near future, uh, each of the councillors on the uh, board are hoping to uh, consult their respective uh, public works directors uh, with help uh, with our, uh, our building, uh, this, the building itself, the infrastructure, heavy maintenance and that sort of thing. We're finding that we need some uh, some advice and some help and assistance with uh, moving forward with it. It is an old building and it needs uh, needs a bit of work and uh, TLC. So um, that's that. And uh, those are just the two meetings I had uh, the, this week or this, since the last council meeting. And that's my report. Okay, thank you. Councillor Horn. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On April 26th, I attended the Perry Sound Area Planning Board. There were 10 consent applications that were heard and approved. There was four from McDougal, two from Whitestone, two from the town of Perry Sound, one from Carling and one <laughs> from the township of McKellar. Also the 2020 financial statements were received for the board. Also um, just want to uh, re reiterate the Bobby Orr Hall of Fame announcement today that was uh, released. So the Bobby Orr Hall of Fame is pleased to announce it will live stream a question and answer with the class of 2020 inductees 
on Friday, June 25th at 7 p.m. The event is hosted by Wabasha Rice and will give us an opportunity to get to know Chris Lee, Sarah Sally, Sally Manning, and Peter Whitman better. The event will also feature Hall of Fame future people, Aiden Dudas, Megan Oldham, and Graham Ritchie, who will share their experiences returning to international competition during the pandemic. Tickets are $37.95 plus HST, available on Tuesday, May 11th at 11 a.m. from the Stocky Center box office or online at www.stockycenter. Thank you, that's my report. Great, thank you. Uh, Councillor Bornman. Well, I'd just start by congratulating those inductees to this, year, this year's class. They're all uh, well-deserved uh, in their and have succeeded wildly in their pursuits. Uh, as Councillor McCann uh, mentioned, uh, I attended a Belvedere Heights Finance Committee meeting on April 26th with our auditor, Don Garriock. This is his last year uh, with the home as he's uh, uh, retiring, so I wish him well. Mr. Garriock's report uh, indicated that uh, there are no financial control issues that the home continues to be in a very strong uh, financial position and that within three years, uh, the, uh, the home will be totally depreciated. They'll, they'll, uh, it'll be a net zero uh, write off uh, by that point. Um, his uh, findings uh, indicated that both revenues and costs were up uh, significantly last year, uh, largely due to COVID, uh, you know, increased funding through the province to, uh, you know, uh, fight uh, and, and ensure the safety of our residents and the corresponding costs. It also demonstrated that revenue from room occupancy was down as, uh, there was, uh, because of regulation, there were increased vacancies at times in the home. Um, the Finance Committee accepted that report on the 26th. And on the 28th, the, uh, the board as a whole met and, and uh, heard a similar presentation and accepted Mr. Garriock's uh, um, findings. And my the only other... Uh, event that I attended was a, a, an airport commission meeting this morning. Um, you know, activity, I, I think, at the airport is, is greatly reduced as a result of the, the provincial lockdown. So there's not really much more to report there. And that's my report for this evening, Your Worship. Okay, thank you. Councillor Keith. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor, fellow councillor, staff, and the public. Uh, councillor Horn has already mentioned uh, my involvement also in reference to the planning board. Uh, in addition, I have been involved with uh, two Zoom meetings and also communication with various members of the um, Community Policing Advisory Committee, the CPAC committee, as we call it. The reason for that is the Community Policing Safety Act is coming into place and the goal date is uh, hope for uh, in uh, 2022 for all of these committees, like for example, the advisory board committee, which various uh, municipal members are, there's eight of us involved in, will in turn become part of a board. Now each board is, um, going to be able to uh, have some independence and be able to be uh, flexible. The purpose of uh, these Zoom meetings uh, from Solicitor General was to get a better idea of what the possibilities are for the board makeup. And this is in the beginning stages, so there'll be uh, time for further changes, but we're trying to get more information. And uh, the various members ha are in the process of, of working together to come up with one proposal to bring to all 
of the uh, members, municipal councils to um, understand better and with recommendations of what is being suggested. So the, the positive is that we're uh, seeing there is some flexibility. However, it seems to me when it comes to finances, there seems to be some weakness there from my viewpoint as to who's paying for what. But I'm hoping that uh, we can get a little bit better of a handle on it. And as a committee, be able to come forth with a proposal that supports at least the concept in our in West Perry Sound of how we see a police board being able to function. And of course, that police board would also involve First Nation and unorganized townships is, is the hope there. So that's uh, all I can report on at this point in time. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Bachman. Thank you, Your Worship. Good evening, Council, uh, staff and public. Um, I have uh, one meeting to report and that is an executive meeting and message um, from the Park to Park Trail. Uh, first, I'd like to start off um, to let um, town council um, know that um, we we do recognize, um, you know, your contribution, the contribution that the town of Perry Sound was able to provide a park to park, um, and we are very uh, grateful with the contribution that has been uh, put forth, and we recognize that. Uh, the town um, is spending a lot of money on the fitness tra trail through town, which is a high quality, highly used multi-purpose recreational trail and a very good one at that. Um, at the moment, uh, there is obviously not a direct connection uh, between um, our trail um, and our, the Seguin Rose Point <coughs> Trail. And though the Rotary Club has been spearheading a project, to create a direct link, um, we do know that our neighboring municipalities have put forth uh, uh, towards construction of this portion of the link and um, in time once access issues are dealt with, um, you know, there may be a opportunity um, for us to connect um, with that part of the trail, which may um, result in opportunities for funding partnerships to see that come through. Um, we also recognize uh, that Council's uh, com comments at the table really validate the reasons why everyone else has pulled out. Over the past, financial support has been given and not only did the trail not improve, it has degraded to the mess it has become. Not much return for the investment out of the public purse. The Seagun Trail really should be in Park to Park Trail when put into shape 10 years ago. It could easily be the first snowmobile trail to open in, set in central Ontario if it was in the proper shape that it should be, now it is one of the hardest. The focus in the past has been too heavily influenced by the special user groups, ATV associations and clubs and snowmobiles. The intent was always a multi-user trail. The focus unfortunately was not. Now we have ended up with a product no one can use safely and we need to fix it before it's too late and dictate its fair use to all who want to use it. It is really the people's trail. We do understand that if park to park makes a serious effort to return this trail to what it should be, municipal, municipal partners will get on board to a greater extent. Um, having said that, currently at this time, we have closed the trail due to unsafe conditions. I have been notified um, today that uh, we do have greater a greater going out on the trail um, to work um, and uh, Gravel will be laid down and with any luck, we will have a few decent kilometers of trail for people to use as early as this weekend. I want to note that this is an epic turning point for the trail and, uh, you know, obviously more grading will be conducted um, to ensure that uh, this trail uh, can be brought back to um, the uh, the position that it needs to and focus again on the multi-use trail. So that's really just a message that I wanted to convey from our executive to show our appreciation and um, to understand um, where council's comments laid in the um, discussions at budget and again, to show our appreciation. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so council staff and public, um, April 22nd, I attended a public health update. April 23rd, I attended a phone call uh, 
COVID update uh, that the Premier put on. April 28th was my first public health board meeting, um, providing up and an update also to the heads of council. And, um, and then what I've been trying to do too is I personally have been providing updates that I get to our council and to the heads of council um, in, uh, in, our, in West Perry Sound. April 29th was the municipal biweekly meeting with our health unit. And I, I do wanna stress that right now, you know, the vaccine rollout is happening, uh, but please don't let your guard down. Let's try to get through this, wear a mask, social distance, do what you can to stay safe, make your outings that you might happen to do count um, and just be very careful. We wanna get through this. We wanna come out the other side and we wanna make sure that people are healthy and we're able to return to some kind of normalcy so that um, life can be better on the other, other side. So uh, again, just please be careful and uh, follow the proper protocol and make sure that uh, you're staying safe. Um, May is Community Living Month and I was part of a, a video that was put together to raise, do the flag raising for community living and um, say a few words. And I just want to say thank you, Councillor Horn, please take this back. The wonderful work that community living does in our community. It is greatly appreciated. And, um, uh, you know, the, the efforts are visible and, and known, but, you know, just thank you. Thank you. And uh, if anyone hasn't seen the video, uh, please go to our Facebook page at Community Living. Thank you, uh, Mayor and our Executive Director and our Board President for doing uh, um, such a great job on the video and the virtual flag raising. Thank you to uh, Rebecca for doing the virtual flag raising. So on behalf of Community Living, thank you. I, I, I tell you, we had this window of opportunity to put the flag up outside, which was really, really good. And everybody's social distance, but uh, it was uh, <laughs> a very small window given the weather that we've had lately. So um, I also like to want to mention that uh, May is census month and Statistics Canada sent out the 2021 census notification to all dwellings. I know our household received notification yesterday. And while our first attempt to access the website yesterday was unsuccessful, I understand that that was quickly fixed. So you should be able to go online and complete the census questionnaire. For those who would prefer a paper questionnaire, call the number identified it on the census uh, notice. The census date is May 11th and Statistics Canada is encouraging people to complete the census by May 11th. However, that date is not a hard deadline. Uh, you can complete the census online or send in the paper census questionnaire as soon as possible after May 11th. Uh, my understanding is it takes a few days to get the paper census. So you wanna, you know, when you get it, try to fill it out as quickly as you can and get it back in. Uh, Statistics Canada hopes to have all the responses by the end of July and meet its previous census completion rate of 98%. Statistics Canada reminds residents that complete completion of the census is mandatory and will be following up with non-responses in August of 2021. So more information can be found on the Statistics Canada website at census.gc.ca. So, and just so everyone knows, it is really important that you do that because it determines a lot of different things uh, even to our grant allocations that we happen to get. So uh, fill out the census form in either by, in, by mail or online, but please do it. Thank you. And that's my report. So on with the agenda. And as I mentioned earlier, there were two items from closed, which 
Um, and it's moved by Council McCann, second by Councilor Backman, that Council supports the staff interpretation of the hiring of family members policy C12. And further, the Council directs staff to update the policy and clarify under what circumstances it is acceptable to have family members working in the same department. Discussion? Anyone opposed to the passing of the resolution? No one's opposed, so that's carried. Thank you. Item 7-2, which was also from closed, moved by Councillor Bornem and seconded by Councillor Burden. Whereas the Council of the Town of Perry Sound recommends the denial of Perry Sound Area Planning Board application B06-2021, TPS Barnes by resolution 20, 21033, and whereas the Perry Sound Area Planning Board granted approval of B06 slash 2021 TPS Barnes by resolution 2021-31, and whereas uh, Perry Sound Area Planning Board resolution 2021-31 does not include a condition of consent that the lands be rezoned in order to ensure compliance with the Town of Perry Sound zoning bylaw, 2004-4653 is amended. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Council appeal the decision of the Perry Sound Area Planning Board application B06-2021 TPS-Barnes to the Local Planning Appeal Tribunal, LPAT, as the Perry Sound Area Planning Board decision would create an illegal non-complying lot for the town's zoning bylaw and does not represent good planning. And further, the council directs the manager of building and planning services to execute all necessary documents as it relates to the submission of this appeal, unless the planning board's decision is amended to note a zoning bylaw amendment is a condition of consent prior to the expiry of the appeal period. Any discussion? Anyone opposed to the passing of this resolution? No, that's carried then. by Councillor Keith and seconded by Councillor Horn that the flag policy as adopted by resolution 2020-076 is hereby revoked and that the flag policy attached to Schedule A, which incorporates adoption of the annual flying of the pride flag and amended protocols regarding half-masting as a mark of respect and condolence is hereby approved. 